Hello everyone, here's another really, really tricky um, differential equation question, okay? Um, it says, figure four shows a right cylindrical water tank. The diameter of the circular cross section of the tank is four meters and the height is 2.25 meters. Water is flowing into the tank at a constant rate of 0.4 uh, pi meters cubed per minute. Uh, there is a tap, a point T, at the base of the tank. When the tap is open, the water leaves the tank at a rate of um, 0.2 pi root h meters cubed per minute, where h is the height of the water in meters. Show that at time t minutes, that after the tap has been opened, the height of the water in the tank satisfies that differential equation. Okay, well, in this question, first of all, they tell us information about the rate at which the water is flowing in and the rate at which the water is flowing out. So that's going to give us the rate of change of the volume of the water. In other words, dV by dt. dV by dt is going to equal to the rate in minus the rate out. OK, so rate in minus rate out is equal to the uh, dV by dt. So let's have a little think about this. So our rate in, we're told, is 0.4 pi. And the rate out, we're told, is 0.2 pi times by root h. OK, so that's our expression for our rate in and our rate out. OK, so good. Let's part that result. Um, now, as you know, I like to start. Notice the equation we've got to find is um, dh by dt. So I like to start off by writing down uh, my chain rule. So dh by dt is going to be dh over something times something over dt. And a good candidate for the something is going to be dv. So we're going to have dv there and dv there. OK, that's great. Now, we've just worked out, haven't we, that the rate of change of the volume is rate in minus rate out. So 0.4 pi minus 0.2 pi times by root h. So that's our rate. That's our dv by dt, rate in minus rate out. So now we've got to find an expression for dh by dv. So let's think about what the volume is of the water in the tank. And that's going to be um, the area of a circle. Uh, so pi times by 2 squared, because the radius is 2, times by the height. So the volume is 4 pi um, h. Therefore, dv by dh is going to be 4 pi. And therefore, dh by dv is going to be the reciprocal of this. So that will be 1 over 4 pi. OK, now there is um, a sneaky little consideration here. Um, I know that when I first saw this question, I was instinctively thinking, OK, well, I need to put a minus here at the front. This is what I was thinking. I should put a minus there. I'm going to put a big question mark by this just so we know that I'm only thinking about it. Um, I thought to myself, surely I ought to put a minus here because we've got a tap that has been opened up. And like the water is like flowing out of the bottom of the tank. So you would expect surely to have a minus there to represent the fact that actually the water is draining out of the tank. However, that is not the case. And the reason why it's not the case and the reason why we don't need a minus there is because 0.4 pi is bigger than 0.2 pi root h. So let's imagine that we are at... Um, well, let's just out of curiosity, see what happens when we're actually at, say, two meters. Yeah. So we've got 0.4 pi minus 0.2 times by pi times by, you know what, let's do 2.25. Imagine it's all the way at the top. OK, just intrigued to see what happens here when the water gets all the way to the top. So we'd have 0.4 times by pi. OK, which is... Um, which is apparently 1.2566 minus, uh, it would be 0.2 times by pi times by the square root of 2.25. Okay, and when we work that out, that is actually 0.9424.
Okay, so what I'm saying is this. This uh this is bigger. So that uh is the 1.2566 is bigger than the 0 0.9424. So in other words, even when the water is got all the way up to the 2.25 meters, it the tank, and even though the tap is open, the tank is filling up with water because this is bigger than this all the way even up to the 2.25 meters okay and that's why we don't need the negative because even though the water is draining out of the tank it's going into the tank at a faster rate than it's coming out i hope that makes sense so therefore we don't need to have the negative if you see what i mean okay so that was just an aside just to illustrate why we don't need the negative Okay, so we don't need it. So we've got that dH by dt is in fact equal to positive 1 over 4 pi. Uh, we could take a factor. What can we take out? Oh, you know what? Let's just leave it as it is. 0 0.4 pi minus 0 0.2 pi root h. And what I'm going to do is break it down into two separate fractions. So I'm going to have dH by dt is equal to uh, 0 0.4 pi divided by 4 pi minus 0 0.2 pi root h over uh, 4 pi, uh, like so. Okay, so dh by dt is equal to that. Let's see what happens. That cancels, that cancels. Uh, 4 divide, 0 0.4 divided by 4 is a tenth, so that is 1 tenth. And then here we have a uh, the pi's cancel, and we have root h, and 0 0.2 divided by 4 is minus a 20th. So we have minus 20 times by root h. Okay, this is looking really good now. Uh, we now just need to multiply everything by 20, and when we do so, we get that 20 dh by dt is equal to 2 minus root h as required. Okay, so that's part A done, okay? We've basically uh, derived that expression. Hope that that made sense, all those steps. So we found out our rate in, take away our rate out. We used the chain rule. Uh, we found an expression for the volume. And then that gave us our expression for our dH by dt. And we had to be super careful about the fact that actually it was filling up faster than the water was draining out. So the water was going up. So we didn't need a negative value. Okay, that's good. Now. So far, so good then. So let's see what happens now in the next part of the question. It says at the instant, yes, there's another interesting thing about to happen here. It says at the instant when the tap is opened, T is equal to zero and H is equal to 0 0.16. Um, use the differential equation to show that the time taken to fill the tank to a height of 2.25 meters is given by that equation. Okay, well, what have we got at the moment? At the moment, we've got 20. It's only two marks, so it can't be anything too crazy. So at the moment, we've got this differential equation. And remember, this is one of these nice things, is that um, Ed Excel are, are putting these breakpoints into a question. So even if you got lost in part A, you can pick it up from this correct answer in part B, which is which is kind of quite user-friendly and quite nice of uh, Ed Excel to do that. So we're go going to separate the variables. So we're going to divide everything by... 2 minus root h, that's going to give us 20 over 2 minus root h. The integral of that with respect to h is going to equal the integral of 1 with respect to t. Um, so in other words, the time is going to equal this, uh, just by separating the variables. 2 minus root h dh. Okay, uh, let's think about our limits. Um, at time t equals 0, the height is 1.6, so we're integrating between 0 0.16. And when it is uh, filled to the top, uh, that's we've got 2.25 as our upper limit. So that's our expression there um, derived for part b for two marks. Just a little bit of separating the variables. Okay, part c. Now, uh, this is another interesting bit. So part c, it says, using the substitution h is equal to 2 minus, um, where's it gone, 2 minus x squared or otherwise, 
uh, find the time taken to fill the tank to a height of 2.25 meters. Well, you might say to yourself, well, why on earth do I need to use the substitution in the first place? Surely I can just integrate this directly. Now let's think, can we integrate this directly? Because uh, if we were going to integrate this directly, we would need to be using the chain rule in reverse. And you may remember that I've said previously, we can only use the chain rule in reverse on things that could have come from the chain rule in the first place. OK, now, if that was the case, we would be looking for an outer, an inner and a derivative. Our outer function would be one over something. Our inner would be two minus root H. And the derivative of two minus root H would be a half H to the minus a half. And then we would integrate the outer and we would divide by the derivative of the inner. However, we cannot employ the chain rule in reverse because we can only use the chain rule backwards on something that's come from the chain rule in the first place. And we're missing this element here. If we had a h to the minus a half somewhere, we'd be fine because we'd integrate that and we would divide by that. But you can't do divide by this if it's not present. OK, so that's why we cannot use the chain rule backwards on this integral because it could not have come from the chain rule in the first place. And when that's the case, we need to use some kind of a substitution, which they're giving us here, h is equal to 2 minus x all squared. OK, so fair enough, we've identified we need to use this substitution. So let's begin this. How do we always start these things? We start them off by differentiating the substitution. So dh by dx is going to equal 2 2 minus x and times by the derivative of the inner function, which is going to be minus 1. So in other words, we end up with minus 2, open bracket, 2 minus x. And then we're going to separate the variable by treating dh by dx as though it was a fraction. And that gives us minus 2, uh, open brackets, 2 minus x times by dx. OK, so we're going to park that. That's going to be replacing our dh in there in a moment. We also need to change our limits because we're changing what we're integrating with respect to from h to x. So therefore, we need to change our limits to reflect x rather than h. So I like to write down my x and my h. OK, and write down the substitution where we've got it written there. Uh, we know our limits for h are 2.25 and 0.16. So let's just see when we've got 2.25. So 2.25 is going to equal 2 minus x all squared. So therefore, the square root of 2.25 equals 2 minus x. So therefore, x is equal to 2 minus the square root of 2.25. OK, let's just see what that gives us. Uh, 2 minus the square root of 2.25 is 2 minus 3 over 2. So therefore, x is equal to a half or 0 0.5. So that is 0 0.5 there. Let's see what happens for our other limit. 0 0.16 is equal to 2 minus x all squared. When we square root 0 0.16, that gives us 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 equals 2 minus x. So x is equal to 2 minus 0 0.4. So x is equal to 1.6 as our other limit. OK, so we found out that our other limit is uh, not. Oh, sorry, is equal to. Um, yeah, 1.6. That's correct. Yeah, 1.6. So when we've got H is equal to 0.16, we've got X is equal to 1.6. So now we've changed our limits. So I think we're ready now to begin the process of substituting everything in. So let's have a look. So T. This is for part C is going to equal the integral now between um, 1.6 and 0 0.5. Because remember, our 0 0.16 has been replaced by uh, 1.6. And our 2.25, which was at the top, has been replaced by 0 0.5. OK, that's fine. We've got 20. And in the denominator, we are going to have uh, 2 minus root h. So that is going to be 2 minus. Now, root h is just going to be uh, 2 minus x, 2 minus x. 
because remember our substitution is h equals 2 minus x squared, so root h is just 2 minus x. And then our dh is minus 2, open bracket, 2 minus x dx. So there's all of our elements um, starting to be replaced now. Okay, let's just see how we can simplify this. So now, in order to simplify this, let's see what we got. We've got, if we remove these brackets, 2 minus 2 cancels, and a minus and a minus makes a plus. So this becomes 20 over x, uh, 20 over x times by uh, minus 2 times by 2 minus x dx. Okay, and then when we expand that, that's going to be 20 times minus 2 times minus 2 is going to be uh, minus um, 80 altogether. I think that's going to go to, yeah, minus 80 over x, minus 80 over x. And then we're going to have um, two, uh, plus 2x times by, so uh, 2 times 2 is uh, 2, sorry, 2 times 1 is 2, and a minus times a minus is a plus. And then we've got to times it by 20. So that is 40x over x, so they cancel, and that's just 40, and that's dx. And we're integrating between the limits of 1.6 and 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, and this is equal to t. Okay, now notice, by the way, because of the fact that we are using definite uh, integration, we've got the limits. Because we've got the limits, notice that we haven't had to start writing plus c anywhere. Okay, because we were going straight into, you know, when you're doing definite integral integration, you don't need to worry about limits. Okay, so that's why we haven't been like adding a C in this particular example. So it's now time to do the integration. So that's going to go to T is equal to minus 80 learn X uh, minus 80 learn X plus 40 X. And that's going to be in between the limits of uh, 0.5 and 1.6 there we go okay perfect apologies if you hear any loud noise in the background there that's just our dogs are obsessed with the foxes in our garden and they kind of like go crazy thinking they're on uh, fox chasing duty okay so we've got minus 80 learn x plus 40 x oh no yes yeah, when we integrate 40 it goes to 40 x that's fine and when we integrate 1 over x it goes to learn of x so now we're going to put in our limits. So t is therefore going to equal minus 80 ln of 0 0.5 plus 40 times by 0 0.5 and then minus uh, the 1.6. So minus um, 80 ln of 1.6 plus 40 times 1.6 like so. OK, and then we can just evaluate what all these terms are. So when I put that in my calculator, that turns out to be 55.452. And I would advocate working out these terms individually because A, it helps an examiner see that you're doing it. And B, it gives you a break point rather than putting the whole thing in the calculator in one go. Because if you put the whole thing in the calculator one go, you know what it's like. Sometimes you put it in. And what happens is you get a particular answer um, and then you try it again and you get a totally different answer and you, you've made a little slip without realising it. So at least by breaking it down, a, a large calculation into its smaller components, it does help to avoid making a mistake. Uh, OK, so we just now notice that was a minus there, by the way, even though it was a plus there, it became a minus here because there was a minus there. So now we just add all those up and we find out that that gives us 49.052 uh, minutes uh, because we're finding out how long it takes to fill the tank. So therefore it says to the nearest minute. So that is 49 minutes to the nearest minute, which is our final answer. OK, quite a tricky question that. Um, but that bit we've just done was worth seven marks. OK. So yeah, it, quite difficult, but um, really worth a good chunk of marks there on that question. Okay, I hope that you found that useful and I will see you in the next video.